Hello everyone. Today we will we'll discuss about the polymorphism concept in Java. So so far we have discussed various uh, object-oriented programming pillars like inheritance, abstraction, classes and objects, and how we can achieve it. Now today another pillar of object-oriented programming is polymorphism concept. So polymorphism means that uh, multiple forms or many forms. Poly means many and morph. Morphism means forms. So we will see the concept of polymorphism and how it is implemented in Java. So there are two types of polymorphism. One is called as compile time polymorphism. Another one is known as runtime polymorphism. So compile time polymorphism is achieved through method overloading and runtime polymorphism is achieved through method overriding. So let's see with the example. So let's create a class shape. Okay. A very simple class and uh, we will have only one property private string name. Let's keep it final also. and uh, alt enter. Let's add a constructor to pass the name to it. Okay, so that we can initialize uh, the shape object with the name of the shape, and we will have a simple method public void calculate area. So we need to calculate area of the shape and for this we will calculate the area of the shapes which has uh, for which only one parameter is required. So that shape uh, is either square or rhombus for both uh, only one parameter is required. So we can simply write area of uh, area of area of uh, shape name is name is and you can write size into size as simple as that right this is the first method now method overloading means that we can have uh, the same name method but with different parameters okay so we can have a public void now same name of the method is it is but we will have different parameters like length and breadth so this can be uh, used for shapes like rectangle and parallelogram right so similarly we can also write one statement here just uh, let me copy it simply we have to write length into breadth perfect now here we can see that the name of the two methods are same but what is the difference is difference is in the number of parameters we have we can also have another type of method like a public void calculate area and we can have just double size so this is also a valid method okay okay so here what we are doing is so either the number of parameters should be different or if the number of parameter is same then the the data type of of the parameter passed should be different right so this way we can have two different methods now here return type don't matter if you, even if you put it in it doesn't matter okay the overloading is still there so if you put int here and if you put uh, suppose void here it doesn't matter but if you are uh, using this and suppose i just uh, say return zero for now so it, it will throw error that calculate area int is already defined because ret return type don't matter so return type you can take whatever you want what matters is the parameters Okay, remember this. 
so here this is one example that we took but we'll follow up with these two examples now it's as simple as that shape one new shape and we will pass square okay and just we will call shape dot calculate area now calculate area which type of calculate area or which method signature we want to call so since square has only one side for which we can all sides are equal so we only pass one parameter so let's pass four to it okay so same method and we construct another one new shape and this time we will say it is a, a rectangle and we will say s2 dot calculate area now here we have the again the choices whether we can pass one parameter or two parameters so we can say two comma six okay as simple as that and if we try to uh, run the program we'll get the correct output right so here the intention is to show you how method overloading works now why this is convenient why we use this why can't we use say calculate area of square or calculate area or something else because first of all it is crystal clear what you are gonna do with this method and second you can uh, customize your methods according to the needs okay suppose you want to calculate the area of a shape which has three parameters or four parameters you can write the same name you can uh, create the same methods with the same name and you can just change the signature of the uh, number of arguments that needs to be given to the methods right so that uh, makes your code consistent more readable and more understandable that is the reason now it is called as compile time polymorphism because at the time of compilation the jvm knows that which calculate area method to call here jvm knows at compile time okay one parameter is passed to this method so and this parameter is an the and this parameter is an integer so this one this method needs, needs to be called then it say when it check for this it says okay two parameters are passed and both are integer type so it searches for that signature method so it finds this and it calls this method at runtime so it resolves which method to call at compile time and therefore it is known as compile time polymorphism okay now for runtime polymorphism we need to have inheritance so we can have a 3d shape type thing okay a 3d shape class extends shape okay uh, let's take private final it will also have a name so let's add a constructor parameter and a super class okay these both are super class is important because since you are extending this uh, so you uh, so since you have defined a parameterized constructor in the parent class you need to define it in the child class also okay if you don't want to define then you need to create an explicitly a default constructor in the a no argument constructor in this parent class okay uh, we have discussed all about the constructor in the constructor video you can see the i button uh, the video must be flashing to get more idea on this super keyword constructors and all okay now here method overriding involves having the same method everything same of what is present in the parent class so we'll just copy this method as it is and we'll paste in the child class okay and suppose i say override and i uh, you have to give the annotation of override and suppose i have a bit different logic here so i say size into size into 10 suppose this is my logic for uh, the child class has given this logic in the 
calculate area now what happening is you have two methods here calculate area here also calculate area with same method signatures same return type everything same what difference is that here child class is providing the implementation of this method so let's see how it uh, how method overriding works so if you say shape or let's first say 3d shape okay and let's say t1 equal to new 3d shape and let's name it a uh, cube okay so i will just say t1 dot calculate area and when i say calculate area i'll pass the as 5 now what do you think which method will be called of course since we have created the reference variable and object of the type 3d shape so the method of 3d shape will be called right so let's see so as you can see the area of the cube is 250 250 so we have passed for 5 as the argument so according to the child class implementation 5 into 5 is 25 25 into 10 is 250 now let's change this into shape now take a time take few seconds and think about it we are having a reference variable of parent class and an object of child class and we are calling the calculate area now this calculate area is implemented here also and here also both have their implementation any so according to you which calculate area method should be called the calculate area method of the parent class or the calculate area method of the child class think about it so if you have think about it let's run this and see what is the answer we'll know it so as you can see we have got again the same result area of cube is 250 means the child class implementation the child class method area cal calculate area is called so as you can see from here in the case of method overriding it is decided by the jvm at the runtime which method to call depending on what object it is or what type of object it is it doesn't matter what type of reference variable you are taking in method overriding it depends what object what type of object you have created so the type of object here is 3d shape therefore the method calculate area will be called for 3d shape here um, here the shape object is created therefore the calculate area will be created for this one right so this is the difference between compile time polymorphism and runtime polymorphism in compile time polymorphism it is decided at compile time which method to call so compiler resolves uh, compiler knows uh, you can say compiler knows before actually actual execution of the program that which method actually to call but when it comes to runtime polymorphism it is decided at runtime because since objects are created at the runtime so it is decided at the runtime that which method to call depending on what type of object is being formed or what which class object is formed right i hope you have understood the concept of uh, compile time and runtime polymorphism also remember runtime polymorphism is also known as dynamic method dispatch okay it's a bit fancy word but uh, our runtime polymorphism is known as dynamic method dispatch okay i hope so it's now completely clear that how the polymorphism works in uh, the case of java okay there are different implementation in other languages but the concept is more or less similar right so with this we'll wrap up the video and if you like the video please subscribe to the channel like the click press the like button i'll see you in the next one till then bye bye